Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Uh, we're here this morning with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta's Morning Inspiration, and we're very, very honored to have Imam Abdullah Jabir as our guest speaker today. Uh, prior to coming to Atlanta, Imam Abdullah was on the West Coast, and Atlanta was so lucky to have him. And he um, was the Imam and Youth Director at Masjid Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, and now he leads Care Atlanta. And Imam Abdullah, we're very, very honored to have you this morning, and we're looking forward to hearing from you, sir. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Blessed morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this morning with everyone. And as I begin, I begin in the name of God, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. We ask Allah to send peace and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions and all of the prophets that have come before him. And we ask God Almighty to enable us to follow in his footsteps and tread the path that he has taken and enable us to enact faith in every aspect of our lives. Uh, I mean, I want to briefly um, share this morning with you and thank you so much for allowing the ISB and myself um, as a guest to come and share these moments with you in this blessed day in this blessed moment. I want to share with you something very unique um, in, the, in the Quranic narrative and arguably also in the biblical narrative. And that is learning how to speak to Allah, learning how to speak to Allah, but not just speak to Allah in any manner, but learning how to conversate and hold a conversation with your creator, with your designer, sustainer, maker, like a child. Yes, learning how to speak to Allah like a child. What does that mean? Why am I talking to you about learning how to speak to Allah like a child this morning? There are multiple incident, incidents within the Quran, in the Quranic, divine Quranic narrative, where for example, Moses, Prophet Musa has asked, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى What is that in your hand? And he has what we would call asa, or a walking stick, a cane, if you'd rather. And instead of saying it's a cane, he goes on on this long-winded answer, and he says, it's my cane, it's my staff, um, I lean on it, عليها, I lean upon it, um, I use it to bring down leaves for my sheep. And, you know, I have many other uses for it. Now, the question is, if God Almighty, if Allah Almighty is asking what is in your hand, he very well knows what is in your hand. He also knows everything that you utilize it for. So that extra information that's given. And I say this because if you were to go to a child and ask a child, how did your day go, my dear? And they may want to tell you that they had ice cream today, but in their narrative of telling you that they had ice cream today, they're going to tell you so many other things. So they may say, I went outside and, you know, I heard this a dog barking and I saw it was our neighbor's dog. Oh yes, mom. And then I saw the ice cream man coming and, you know, then John K. Jonathan came out from his house and I said hi to him. And then there was a ladybug and, and then, and then, and then, and then the end, he or she, you know, may tell you that, oh, and then I had ice cream and it was really, really good. It was strawberry flavor. The question is, why do children do that? Why is it they give us so much information and there's so much pleasure and excitement that they have when they speak to us and they give us all this extra information? Why is that? That's because children, they trust their parents. They have confidence in their parents. They rely on their parents. Uh, and they have sureness and certainty in their parents. So the question typically for us is not that do we believe in Allah? The question is usually, do you believe Allah? Because Allah has a promise in the Quran. The one who depends on him, for him or for her, surely your Lord is enough. The one who relies on Allah, Allah is enough. So that promise, and, and this 
you know, speaking to Allah and giving extra information, this is a conversation with someone that you confide in, someone that we trust in, someone that we are certain will be there. You know, we have best friends and we have BFFs and when we're in a difficulty, we say, you know, I know they're going to come through. And someone say, come on, you know, there's a late, it's, it's not going to happen. And there's a surety within you, you say, no, this is a lifelong friendship. We've been through a lot together. I know he's going to come through. I know she's going to come through. That's a best friend. We're speaking about our creator here. And this, this narrative that we see, the divine narrative in the Quran, this is in multiple places. The prophet Zakaria, for example, um, when he speaks to God, he you know, raises his hands in the, in the very confines of his house alone. And I want to, you know, kind of underline this discussion on the idea of being alone. Moses was alone when he had that conversation. And Zachariah is alone when he's having this conversation. And he says, oh, Allah, my bones have weakened. I mean, he can just make dua. He can just have a conversation. He can just supplicate to God. But he's going into detail. Details of things about him that God very well knows, Allah very well knows. But again, it's that certainty and trust and reliance upon Allah. That's why we share with God Almighty, with Allah. And here we see Zachariah, he says, oh, oh Allah, my bones have weakened and my hair has flared up into this, you know, this whiteness has flared up in my hair. And I have called onto you before, but never have I been left despondent. You have always come to my aid. Now, when I'm talking about, you know, conversation with, with God, conversation with Allah, our traditionally in our Islamic, you know, uh, uh, tradition, scholars talk about there's two types of conversation. One is the conversation of the ask. That, you know, we're, we're good at doing, especially in times of difficulty, because when things get hard, we turn to Allah and we ask for things. But what I'm talking about is actually a bit different. It's a second type of dua or second type of what I would like to call conversation. And that is just a conversation. And this is actually what the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah Muhammad meant when he said, a dua mukhul ibadah, that supplication, where our ability to conversate with Allah our ability to conversate with our creator is the very core of our faith because it shows the very definition of being a servant and servitude. Because whenever difficulty comes before turning to anything, anywhere, any means, we learn and we train ourselves to turn to our creator and turn to the one who has created the means. So instead of going to resources first, you keep your focus on the source himself. And this is something very similar in the story of, of Nuh. And in, in the biblical tradition, we see that in multiple occasions, Jesus, he tells his disciples um, to become like little children. You know, in, in the book of Mark, he says, uh, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child, shall not enter it. And this is something that the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has taught us. The idea of conversating with Allah. The idea of speaking to Allah. Beyond our dua and supplication of the ask, learning to speak to Allah. You know, the beautiful thing about speaking to anyone, let alone speaking to the creator of the heavens and the earth, is that when you speak about something and you get into that habit and get into that cadence, whatever that difficulty is, it loses a grip over you. I mean, we've, we've experienced it in our life. When you go and speak about something that has happened to you and it may be disturbing and it may cause anxiety and sometimes even more than that, but the more we talk to someone that we confide and trust in, 
the more it loses grip over us, the more it loses its strength over us, and the more we feel free, at ease. Imagine if we were to learn and if it was to become the norm that we talk to Allah. Now, why am I talking about this in this specific you know, scenario? Because right now we are in quarantine. Many of us find ourselves alone. We have families, but you know, there are times of the day that we find alone and we find time. I believe it's a perfect time for us, a perfect opportunity for us to connect to our creator, to have conversations of anything and everything. And like a child, go into the extra information because the prophet and the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that Allah loves when you conversate with him. Allah loves when we conversate with him. So why not? What have we got to lose? You know, subhanAllah, my mother shared a story of when I was born that because of lack of resources and affordable medical care, I almost died. And I asked her, how did you get through it? And she said, well, at that time, I had given up on the world and I turned to God, I turned to Allah and I just conversated with him and I relied on him. And then when I was about 12 years old, I was told I was diagnosed with an illness and I was told I was never going to walk again. I was in a wheelchair for about a year. And my mother came back and reminded me that conversate with him, just speak to him. And by the grace of God, I'm fully walking. Uh, at times my mother, you know, would say, I wish, uh, you know, out of maybe you didn't walk because I caused her trouble later on in my teenage years. But recently, um, a few months ago, when I, me and my uh, beloved wife, Mariam, we lost our firstborn, our, we lost our son, um, it was difficult. And my mother reminded me that same advice she give, had given me uh, much, you know, years before. Talk to Allah, conversate with Him. And in these moments, in the moment that we're going through right now as individuals, as families, and as a nation, conversate with Allah, talk to Allah, tell Him all the extra details because Allah loves to hear from you. And you know, the last thing that I want to say before I, I close is that when it comes to, you know, it's easy to remember God in at times of ease, but the challenge of faith is to remember God when it's difficult. And, you know, one of my teachers used to say, look for Allah in the way things are, not in the way you hope things to be. This place, this time, right here, right now, learn to look at things as they are. You know, know that this difficulty is an opportunity for us to recognize Allah. Allah is not waiting for you on the other side of this trial and on the other side of this test. He's not waiting for you to figure things out on your own and by yourself. No, Allah is in the trial, in the center of it, right here, right now, with you. The question is this, do we trust Allah? So learn how to conversate with God in your daily life. May Allah enable us. Thank you so much for having me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Imam Abdullah, Jazakallah khair for the beautiful words and teaching us how to speak to God Almighty. Jazakallah khair and what a great way to start off our Friday. Assalamu alaikum everyone and inshallah we'll see you next week.